Hey there, folks. In this video, we're going to be talking about the DAX component method. The DAX component method is sort of a new way of uh, thinking about DAX and looking at DAX, which hopefully will make it not quite so scary and perhaps a bit more intuitive. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will look at DAX and think, oh, yes, I got this. This is definitely something I can do. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? So to level set, uh, to level set, one of the things we're going to be trying to explain in this presentation is how do we build, um, well, a visual in a particular uh, report. So if I were to report page right here, uh, this uh, table visual, how is it being built? Specifically, how are the numbers being built inside of it? Uh, we know or we can imagine that when we build this table, right, there's these filters that are being applied to it. Filters like category equals food, store layout equals sit down. Uh, somebody's clicked on Q2 here for cross filtering. So we've got a filter for uh, quarter equals quarter two and a filter for these different product lines. All those filters are affecting this calculation. But there's also other filters in here like uh, filters for a particular year or a particular state based on the row or even things like uh, filters for premium products based on sort of the name of the measure. So how how are all these filters getting introduced? And maybe more generally, how are we producing these numbers? So that's that's sort of what we're going to be talking about. Okay. So, would you like to understand DAX? I hope so. Uh, if the answer is yes, let's look at these three things. Refine filters, target. Derive table, extract. Iterate, manufacture. These are the three components of DAX. With these three tools with these three things, you can do everything you need to do in DAX, or at least 95% of it. So even though there's going to be a lot of different names of functions and a lot of different kinds of references, they all basically boil down to being one of these three components. And almost everything you do in DAX is just some uh, combination of these three things. Okay, make ourselves some space right there. So those are our three components. Those are the three tools we're going to use. Let's look at a table. This is the sales table, right? Down here it says sales. This is the sales physical table in the data model. By physical table, what I mean is this is the table that we load into Power BI. So when we use Power Query, the edit queries experience, uh, we say, I wanna go get a table and uh, we clean it up a little bit and when we're done, we have to close an apply button and it loads that table into Power BI. Now this table, uh, we call it a physical table because it's actually uh, stored on disk when you hit the save button. More importantly, this is the detailed table, right? This is the table from which we are going to build our summarizations. This table by itself isn't that interesting, but from this table, right, we can build more interesting tables. Something like, oh, I don't know, this, right? So up here we have a summary table. A summary table is the thing that the DAX engine creates. So on a moment's notice, uh, Power BI will say, I need to create a particular summary. It'll send a request off to the DAX engine and DAX will say, sure, I can create that summary. It does it in less than a second, it returns the results. So here in this particular summary table, we've got a couple measures, uh, total sales, Oregon sales, and previous month sales, and we've got them broken down by month, right? So this table right here is a summarization of the sales physical table in the data model, right? We use the M language, uh, Power Query, to build this uh, uh, detailed table, right? Then we use the DAX engine to very quickly on the fly build these summary tables. Now, once we've built the summary tables, right, uh, we're gonna pass them off to Power BI and Power BI is gonna draw them as any number of visuals. So this summary table right here, right, I might draw it as a clustered column chart, so it might look something like this right here, or I might draw it as a line chart, so it looks something like this here, or I might draw it as a table visual. But for every visual in Power BI, right, uh, regardless of how it looks, behind it is a summary table saying uh, what gets drawn inside this visual, okay? And this summary table, that's what the DAX engine produces. Okay, so let's hide some of this stuff for just a second, just to sort of simplify our analysis. And let's uh, focus for a moment on this sales physical table in the data model. Now, for the most part, when you're doing uh, analysis, you probably don't want to look at this entire table. M maybe if you're looking at the grand total, you want to see all the rows, but for the most part, you're only going to want to see a particular subset. So for example, you might want to just look at all the uh, rows, all the transactions, all the sales transactions related to January, month one. Or perhaps you just want to look at all the transactions related to month two, February. Or perhaps you want to look at all the transactions related to month three, March. Or or maybe you just want to look at all the transactions related to the state of Washington, or maybe you want to look at all the transactions related to the state of Oregon, or maybe you want to look at all the transactions just for month two in the state of Washington. Like, regardless though, when you're doing analysis, you're only looking for the most part at a subset of the data, right? That's all you're gonna care about. Okay, so uh, let's 
Let's look at, we'll bring our summary table back here. Let's think about this $82, right? This $82 uh, for Oregon sales for month two, okay? So if I were to ask an end user, uh, what does this $82 represent? Well, they would say it should be uh, sales for the state of Oregon uh, in month two. And sure enough, it does. But how do we get uh, this number from this table right here? Well, that's what we're going to explore. But let's start by just thinking about the filters, right? How do we get the filters right? So if we're just looking for Oregon sales in month two, well, that's going to correspond to just sort of uh, those rows right there, right? So how do we get them? Well, the short answer is filter refiners. So when this cell starts calculating this $82, right, there's actually no filters uh, set, right? So you might think, oh, there's already a filter for month two, or maybe there's something else going on, but there's not. When this cell, when we start, when DAX starts calculating this number, there's actually no filters in the filter context. Oh, wait, what do I mean by filter context? I kind of jumped ahead for a second. Uh, the filter context is the set of filters, set of filtered tables that determines which rows we're looking at, right? So uh, because when this cell starts evaluating, there's no filter tables in the filter context, uh, we're essentially going to be looking at all the rows, okay? But that's not correct. So for this $82 right here, we're going to need two filters. Specifically, we're going to need a filter for month equals two, and we're also going to need a filter for the state of Oregon because that's what an end user expects, okay? So uh, we know that this filter context isn't going to cut it. So we need to modify the filter context, and that is what a filter refiner does, right? A filter refiner takes the existing filter context and creates a new filter context to more accurately look at a, uh, a more meaningful subset of the data. So uh, when this starts evaluating, because this is a measure and measures are filter refiners, more on that in a minute, uh, every single measure, every single filter refiner is going to start by performing current row filtering. So it's going to take any uh, categorical values of the current row, specifically month equals two, and add it as a filter, right? Just like that. Okay. So the filter refiner, specifically the, the measure, which is a filter refiner, it's going to say, hey, I need to go refine the filters. I need to make them more correct. And it says, okay, I'm going to perform current row filtering. I'm going to take uh, month equals two, right, and add it as a filter table here in the filter context, in this new filter context, right? So we had an empty filter context. The filter refiner built a new filter context with the filter table of month equals two. There's that filter table right in there. And under this new filter context, now we're just looking at February, month equals two. Hey, that's pretty cool, but it's not exactly correct. We're closer, but we're not where we need to get, right? We need to be looking both at month two and Oregon. So how do we uh, how do we look at just Oregon? Well, we're gonna use another filter refiner. Now I'll talk about the specifics of how we do it later on, but generally speaking, we're gonna use yet another filter refiner, specifically the calculate function, to create a new filter context. Right? We're going to take this uh, second filter context and create a new one uh, with uh, state equals Oregon added as a filter table in this new filter context. Right. So now we've got month equals two and state equals Oregon. And if we think about this filter context, we treat it like a lens. When we look through the lens of this filter context, the rows that we see at the physical table are just month equals two and state equals Oregon, which is exactly what we need to calculate that number right there. Right now, we'll get into actually how we produce that eighty-two dollars. But it, the most important part is how do we actually manipulate the filter so we're looking at the right subset of data? And the answer is we use filter refiners. Okay, good. So uh, if we think about previous month sales, we can sort of do the same exercise. When that cell starts evaluating, there's no uh, filter tables in the filter context. Right. So the very first thing uh, that happens is measures our filter refiners. It's going to look for categorical values uh, in the current row. It's going to find one for month equals two, and it's going to add it as a filter, right? So the filter ref refiner says, I'm going to take this old filter context and create a new one with any uh, value in the current row. I've got one for month equals two because we're only looking at that 136 right there, right? So now we've got this new filter context of month equals two, and now we're just looking at February, uh, which is... I guess better than looking at everything, but that's not what we need. If the measure is called previous month sales, we don't want to look at February, we want to look at January, right? Well, just like before, we're going to call another filter refiner, specifically we're going to use the calculate function, right? And that's going to produce this new filter context where we remove the old filter for month equals two and replace it with a filter for month equals one. And now that we've got a filter for month equals one, well, sure enough, we're looking at January sales, which is what we're going to need to produce that $136, okay? 
So uh, the important parts here is the, the filter context, it's gonna act like a lens. This is gonna determine which subset of the, uh, of the data we're gonna be looking at, which rows are visible, right? And if we want to look at a new subset of the data, we have to create a new filter context. And what do we use to create new filter contexts? Well, filter refiners, that's specifically what they do. Whenever you wanna create a new filter context, you use a filter refiner. Okay, good, that's the hardest part of this presentation. If you've got that down, uh, you're doing pretty good. Okay, so <clears throat> this filter refiner, it's gonna come from the measure specifically, right? It's gonna perform current row filtering. It's gonna uh, take any values of the current row, month equals two, and add it as a filter. And then we're gonna use another filter refiner, specifically calculate, and rather than relying on current row filter, we're actually gonna provide an override filter. This says, forget what it says before, I wanna go look at January, okay. So uh, what is a filter refiner? A filter refiner creates a new filter context via two things. Current row filtering, where we take any categorical values of the current row and add them as filters, and optional override filters. This is where uh, we as DAX authors take a specified table, right, and add it as a filter. Here we add month equals one, okay? The filter refiners that you're gonna care about as a new DAX author are the calculate function, calculate table and any measure. These are all the things that refine the filters to create a new filter context, to point at a new subset of the data. Okay, so let's imagine that we've got a filter context, right? Uh, with month equals two and state equals Oregon, right? These are the two tables in the current filter context. So we're kind of pointing at those rows in the data. Okay, that's great, uh, but we're just pointing at them. We need to actually go do something with them, right? Well, uh, we're talking about filter refiners, refining filters. The next we're gonna talk about is table derivations or deriving tables. This is where we uh, use that lens to go create a table value. So, for example, I could use a filter, uh, a table derivation that looks like this, where I say, hey, go get the sales table, right? Remember, the name of this table is sales, right? So if I were to write in a DAX code, uh, sales, go get the sales table, what I actually get is not the entire sales table, but all the rows of the sales table that are currently visible in the filter context, the current filter context, right? So since we've got this filter context right here for a month equals two and state equals Oregon, we're just looking at those rows. So when I ask for sales, it creates a table value that looks like this. This is a, ta this is a table that I could work with. That's what I mean by a table value, right? So you may think uh, in, in DAX that you actually work with the physical table directly. You don't. What you actually do is you uh, use table derivations to create these table values, right? With sort of subsets of the data as these own independent tables that you can work with. Okay, so uh, one table derivation is just to ask for the table by name. There's some others though. So for example, I can ask for uh, values of the state column in the sales table, right? So what this values function does is it goes, get, it goes and it gets me all the distinct values of a particular column that are currently visible. So if I look at the state column right there, and I look at it through this lens of the current filter context, well, I can only see Oregon. Now, if I wasn't looking through the lens, I'd be able to see Oregon and Washington, but I am, that's what the values function does. So all I could see is Oregon. So what gets returned? A single column, single row table with state equals Oregon. That's another kind of table derivation. This is yet another table value that I will be able to work with. Specifically, I'll be able to pass it into an iterator. Okay, so uh, there's some others that are pretty valuable, right? Another uh, table derivation is the all function, right? So we take the all function and point it again at the state column in the sales table. And what the all function does is it actually uh, temporarily ignores the filter context. It says, I don't care what's in the filter context. I wanna go get uh, all the distinct values of a particular column, ignoring the filter context, right? So value says, look through the lens. All says, ignore the lens. And if I look at the state column, ignoring the lens, Right, I see both Oregon and Washington, and if I go all the way down, yep, just Oregon and Washington, that's all that I've got. So this creates a single column two row table with state and Oregon and Washington inside of it. I'll be able to take this uh, derived table, this table value, and do other stuff with it, specifically pass it into an iterator. Okay, there's one more that we're gonna focus on. Lastly, is the it's the same function, all, uh, but rather than pointing the all function at a particular column like state, we can point the all function at an entire table, right? And so what we get is the entire uh, sales table ignoring the filter context, right? It just kind of sort of barely fits in there, right? So uh, those are the f four different table derivations that you're gonna work with with any frequency in DAX. There are others, but those are the ones that you need to know, okay? So table derivation, creates a table value, a table that you could work with, based on physical tables in the data model. 
So uh, one table derivation is you could just ask for a table by name, in which case you will get uh, all of the columns, but you will get it uh, filtered through the current filter context. You can also ask for uh, values of a particular column, just one column in a table, and you'll get all the visible values of that one column, right? Respecting the filters. You can also use the all function pointed at a table, which, which will give you all of the columns and it will be unfiltered. That's that guy right there. You can also ask for all pointing at a particular column in a table. This will give you all of the uh, values of just that column, but also ignoring filters because that's what the all function does. So these are the terrible table derivations that you're gonna use to pull out table values to work with. Okay, so at any given moment in DAX, there's always one active filter context, but if you imagine, if you imagine sort of three filter contexts, just sort of store them in your head, it's worth pointing out that if I were to perform the same table derivation, say ask for sales, 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 right? I write the si same bit of code, but if I execute that same bit of code under these three different filter contexts, I'll get three different tables, three different table values, right? Why? Well, because when I ask for it here, I'm asking it in this filter context where I can only see month equals one. When I ask for it here, I look at it in this filter context where I see month equals two and state equals Washington. And if I ask for it down here, I'm looking in this filter context where I've got month equals three, state equals Oregon, and quantity equals four. So again, I write the same code, I ask for the same thing, but I get three different table values because I'm asking under three different filter contexts. So the entire idea of changing the filter context is being able to uh, derive a table and get different results. The subset of the data that you care about at any given moment. Okay, so uh, we've got our uh, filter refiners, which we've used to create this new filter context, right? With month equals two and state equals Oregon. We've gone ahead and derived a table, right? We've got this table value right here. It's sales, which is to say all the visible rows of sales under the current filter context, that one right there. Just pointing at that rose right there. Cool, uh, let's do something with it. That's where iterators come into play, okay? Iterators are going to uh, create a new value based off of a derived table, right? This is sort of the manufacturing process. So uh, for example, uh, one common iterator is sum x, right? So all these iterators are gonna work the same way. They're gonna take a table value, they're gonna add a column to it, an expression column, and they're gonna do something with the results. So here in this instance, we've got sum x, that's an iterator. It's gonna take the table value sales, right? Argument one, which is this guy right there. And it's gonna add this column to it. This is the expression column that it's gonna to add to it. For every single row, take quantity and multiply it by price. So here we get uh, four times four, which is 16. Here we get four times 10, which is 40. Here we get three times six, which is 18. And here we get two times four, which is eight. So this is the new column that we've added to the table. And once we've added this new column, what do we do with it? We sum it up and we get $82. Why do we sum it up? Because it's the sum x function, right? That's what this iterator does. It adds, uh, it takes this table, it adds this column to it, this expression column, and it sums up the results, okay? So this is going to take that table value and produce a number, a number that we might find meaningful, such as total sales for, you know, month equals two and state equals Oregon. Okay, so, uh, for, for, for brevity, let me, let me go back for a second. The way that you actually write these iterators is you do sum x, uh, your table derivation, then comma, and the definition of your expression column. To, to simplify things a little bit, I'm actually gonna leave argument one out just because it's already over there. So when you see the gap here uh, for the iterators, know that it's just the derived table because that's just sort of how it works. So sales here, that's gonna go in argument one right there. Okay, so uh, we can also, we can also use the exact same expression, quantity times price, and pass it into different iterators. Right now we're looking at sum x. What if we were to do max x, right? So we do max x, and sales is argument one, so we take the max x over sales. So we take the sales table, the derived table, right? We add the exact same column to it, quantity times price. Once again, we get 16, 40, 18, and eight. Before we summed it up, now we're gonna take the max of it. Why are we taking the max? because it's max x. Again, pretty darn simple. Okay, we can also do average x, right? Average x, again, over the sales table, just take sales and put it right there in your head. Uh, for every single row, we're gonna take the quantity and multiply it by the price. We're gonna get these exact same numbers again because we're doing the exact same thing. The only difference is rather than summing it up or maxing it up, we're gonna take the average of it, in which case we get 21. Why average? Because it's average x. 
Okay, so that's pretty easy. Uh, we can also, as you might expect, change the definition of the uh, expression column. So here in the first one, we've got quantity times price, which we've already seen before. Uh, we can also say, hey, I'm going to do the sum x again over the sales table. Put sales right there. Uh, this time, the definition for my, new, for my new column isn't quantity times price. It's just quantity. So here we get 4, 4, 3, and 2, right? 4, 4, 3, 2. Okay, so those are all my numbers. And now I'm going to take the sum of them because I'm using sum x, and I get 13, which is my total quantity. Okay. Uh, I could also do something a bit more convoluted, a bit more complicated, right? I could say, hey, sum x over the sales table, like take sales and put it right there in argument one, right? So take the sales table right there, right? And add this column to it. If the sales quantity is greater than three, take the sales quantity and add one to it. Otherwise, just use regular old sales quantity. Maybe it's sort of like a baker's dozen kind of a thing. I don't know. I'm just pointing out that you could do sort of more complex things in here with if statements and things like that. So uh, here for the quantity, that's four, that's greater than three, so we get five. Uh, same thing right here, quantity four is greater than three, so we get four plus one, which equals five. Here the quantity is three, which is not greater than three, so we get three, and here we get two. Okay, we, we sort of get the idea. We take all those numbers and we add them up and we get 15, right? Because that's what we asked it to do. Okay, good, pretty darn easy. Now, uh, I'll point out that these expressions don't have to make any business sense. So up here, uh, we've got sum x for argument one, we've got sales. Again, just take sales and put it right there on your head. And the, uh, the column that we're gonna add just has the definition pi. Why pi? Well, because I like pi. I mean, who doesn't like pi? So for every single column, we get 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14. 3 and when we sum it up, we get 12.57. Uh, what business sense does that make? None, but we can do it, right? We're just adding a column to a table and summing it up. Here, uh, we're going to take that same sales table again, pass it into sum x, and the definition of the new column is a random number between 20 and 30. So we get 22, 21, 30, and 28. And if you add all those up, we get 101. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing, but we can absolutely do it. Again, we're just adding a column to a table and summing up the results. And if we wanted to average it, we would use average x. If we wanted to max it, we'd use max x, right? Down here, we could be even goofier. For every single column, we're going to take the month number and multiply it by the price. It means absolutely nothing. So month two, we take February. Month equals two. When we multiply that by four, we get eight. Uh, here, we get 20, 12, eight. We add that all up. We get, I guess that should, shouldn't be 16. Whatever this is, let me look right here. The sum for that is 48 is what that should say. Uh, and that's sort of what we would get. Now, uh, my point here, my point with all of this, right, is the following. The rules of your business are important. The rules of DAX are important. They are not the same set of rules. So when you want to go understand DAX, you sort of have to forget your business rules for a little bit. Because as you're trying to understand it, you're going to feel like you're constrained by the way that your business works. And DAX doesn't care about that. DAX doesn't know that your business exists. So if you want to understand DAX, you have to understand in its purest form. You have to know that all you're doing is refining the filters to go target the subset of data that you want to work with, uh, deriving tables to go pull those values out into a table value that you can work with, and then uh, using an iterator to take that table, add a column to it, and do something with the results, right? If it lines up with your business, fantastic, but it doesn't have to. DAX is just a simple, simple machine. Okay, good. So uh, there's one other iterator that I want to show you that uh, is a bit less uh, intuitive. Now, the other ones were sum x and average x and max x. There's also like median x, concatenate x, rank x. You can kind of guess how all those work. There's one other one that's pretty darn important. It's called filter. Uh, don't be confused that there's no x on it. If it were me naming this, I would have called this filter x. This is indeed an iterator, right? And just like the other iter iterators, it's going to take a table value, add a column to it, and do something with the results. So right here, uh, take again, in your head, take sales, put it right in there. So we're going to do filter over the sales table, we're going to add a column to check to see if the sales price is greater than five. And what are we going to do with it? Ooh, that's interesting. Well, let's start just by evaluating price is greater than five, right? So four is not greater than five, so we get a false. 10 is greater than five, so we get a true. Six is greater than five, so we get a true. Four is not greater than five, so we get a false. So uh, I don't know, what, what do we do with this stuff, right? Before we summed it or averaged it or median it, I don't quite know what to do with this. What the filter function does is it keeps all of the true rows. Just like that, right? So the other ones were, were producing, uh, technically a scalar is the name of it, which is to say a single value, like a number or maybe a date or something like that. But they produced a single value. The filter function, by contrast, is an iterator 
but it produces a table value where we get all of the true rows. So here's another example, right? I'm gonna do filter again over the sales table, so put sales right there in your head. For every single row, I'm gonna to check to see if the quantity is greater than two, right? So I get true for these first three rows and false for the last one, right? And what does the filter function do? It keeps all of the true rows. So those are right there, those show up right there, right? That's how that works. Okay, so we'll do one more. We can also do some complex stuff, as you might have guessed. So we're gonna do filter again over the sales table, put sales right there in your head as argument one. Argument two, what's the definition of our new expression column? Uh, is the quantity equal to four and the price is equal to 10? Uh, well, it's false there, it's true there, false and false. And again, what does filter do? It just keeps the true rows, which is to say it just keeps that row right there, which is the table value that the filter function spits out. Okay, so uh, you might be asking, why, why would you ever want to do this? I understand why you would use average X. I understand why you would use uh, sum X or median X or things like that or max X. What's the point of using this filter function? What do you do with a table value once you've produced it? The short answer is you pass it into a filter refiner, right? You say, I'm going to go call a filter refiner like a measure or a calculate. And in that filter refiner, I'm going to take this table value and pass it in as an override filter, right? And so what it's going to do is it's going to, it's going to say, hey, uh, I've got this new filter that's got these values in it. And so this, since this one, new one has month and it also has a state, I'm gonna get rid of the old filters for month and state. And this becomes the new filter in my new filter context, which is gonna allow me to look at this new subset of the data, right? So you use the filter function to build these override tables that get passed into a filter refiner to go look at a new subset of the data. Okay, good. So uh, again, three common examples of iterators. Uh, there's sum x, right, where we take the sum x over the sales table, right? So we take the current visible rows and sales for every single one, which you have to see if the quantity, or which we take the quantity, we multiply it by the price, and then we add up the results. Quantity times price, quantity times price, quantity times price, and add up the results. Uh, here we could do max x over the sales table, right? We're going to add the following expression column, which is just a uh, sales quantity. We don't add anything to it. We don't multiply it by anything. We just get the quantity. So we get the quantity for every single row, and then we take the max, which happens to be four. Why max? Because we're using max x. And again, we've got this uh, fancy filter iterator. Uh, even though there's no x, this is an iterator, right? So we're gonna take filter over the sales table, right? So for every single row, we're gonna check to see if the price is greater than five. False, true, true, false. And what does the filter function do? It keeps all of the true rows, which produces this table value right there. Not a scalar like four or 82, but an entire table value that we can pass into a filter refiner. Okay, so uh, what does an iterator do? It creates a new value from a usually derived table value. This new value is based on the action of the iterator, which is to say uh, the word that comes before the X, the max or the sum or the filter acting on the defined expression column, right? So we sum up those values, we max those values and we sort of filter by those values right there. And that's what an iterator does, okay? It takes our derived table and creates something more useful out of it. Okay, so let's see how all this stuff works together. Let's come back and look at our summary table. And we'll start by looking at the simplest calculation, total sales uh, for February, okay? So we've got a measure called total sales, and we're gonna look at how we just get this $112. Not how we get the entire table, right? That's a whole other discussion. We're just gonna focus on this one number right there of $112. And I've got my measure defined right here, right? Um, just so that I, I want you to know that like I'm not making this stuff up. I've got my definition here, but what I want you to do is don't focus so much on the code down here Focus on the combination of refining filters, deriving tables, and iterating. That's the more conceptually important thing that you have to understand. Uh, go ahead and watch this video one time and focus on that. If you wanna come back and focus on the code, you can, but really the, the, the combination of refining filters, deriving tables, and iterating, that's far more important. Okay, so $112, how do we get it? When this cell starts evaluating in the summary table, right? There's nothing in the filter context. The filter context is completely empty, which is to say if we look through that lens, we're gonna see the entire physical table. Okay, so uh, because uh, total sales is a measure and all measures are filter refiners, the very first thing that's gonna happen is this measure is going to refine the filters and perform current row filtering, right? It's gonna take any categorical values, the current row, specifically month equals two, and it's gonna add them to create a new filter context. 
right? Boom, just like that, okay? So again, filter refiners, they create a new filter context via either current row filtering or optional override filters. You always perform current row filtering. You can optionally add override filters, okay? So when we run total sales in this row, it performs current row filtering, finds that month equals two, and in the new filter context, it adds a filter for month equals two. Cool, so now we've got this new filter context of month equals two, and now we're just looking at uh, February, okay? So if you look at the, the name of this measure, total sales, and if you look at the current row of February, well, heck, we got the filters just right. We're looking at all the rows for February. We don't need to modify the filters at all. Cool, so what we could do now is just go ahead and uh, derive a table, right? So uh, here, we're gonna derive the sales table. Again, we're not gonna get the whole sales table. We're gonna create a table value with all the rows that are currently visible in sales, which is all those rows right there, because that is the current filter context. Boom, we derived that table right there. Okay, so now that we've derived that table, right, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is use an iterator on it, right? So we've got this table value, but it's not useful yet. We have to use this to create total sales. Well, how do we do that? An iterator, right? So our iterator is sum x, right? Right there in the code for what it's worth. So we sum x over that table and we add this column to it and we sum up the results. Okay, so sum x, we take the table value of sales that we just derived, comma, we add the following column to it, quantity times price. That's quantity times price for every single row. And when we're all done, what do we do? We sum up the results to get $112. And that $112, well, that's $112 right there. That's how we get that calculation. Okay, good, that one's pretty easy. Let's do one that's just slightly more complicated, right? Let's look at organ sales. And if you look at the code, uh, it's a bit longer, right? We've got these variables in here, don't let them scare you. Again, focus on refining filters, deriving table, and iterating, okay? So how do we get this $82? Well, before we get the $82, let's just stop and think to ourselves, uh, what filters need to be in place to get this $82? Well, we're gonna need a filter for month equals two, and we're also gonna need a filter for Oregon sales. Okay, well, when the number starts calculating, when that cell starts calculating, the filter context is completely empty, so we're looking at the whole darn physical table. That's not what we need. So, when this measure starts evaluating, right, the very first thing that happens is because this is a measure, and all measures are filter refiners, it's gonna perform current row filtering, right? It's gonna find any categorical value in the current row, specifically month equals two, and it's gonna add it to the filter context, right? just like that, okay? So the filter refiner of the measure creates a new filter context with this new filter for month equals two in there. And now we're just looking at February, which is good, but we're not done. Again, remember, we need to look at both February and just Oregon. But when we performed current row filtering, it didn't see Oregon anywhere, so it didn't add it. All it saw was February. So we're gonna have to add a filter for Oregon ourselves. Okay, good. So with that filter in place, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drive a table. We're gonna drive all the values of state, right? Not just the visible ones, but all of them, right? So if you look, if you were to just look at the visible ones, actually you get both of them, Oregon and Washington, but we're gonna look at the entire column, ignoring current filters. So I see Oregon right there, I see Washington. Okay, so that's all the distinct values of state, visible and indivisible. And so we get that derived table right there, state, Oregon and Washington, okay? So now that we've got this derived table of state equals Oregon or Washington, uh, we need to do something with it, right? We can't use this as a filter because we don't wanna look at both Oregon and Washington. We just wanna look at Oregon because that's the darn name of our measure. So what are we gonna do with it? Well, we've derived this table, we're gonna pass it into an iterator, right? The iterator we're gonna pass it into is the filter function. We're gonna filter over all of sales states. So we're gonna take this table value right there and we're gonna add this column to it. For every single row, we're gonna to check to see if the state is equal to Oregon. Does Oregon equal Oregon? Yes, it does. Does Washington equal Oregon? It does not. And again, what does the filter function do? It's gonna keep all the true rows. So what do we keep? We keep this table value of state equals Oregon. Ah, cool, state equals Oregon. I could take this table value and create a new filter context, adding that uh, table into it, and I'll be looking at both February and, or and Oregon. Good, so that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay. So uh, one of the filter refiners is any measure. The other main filter refiner that you're gonna use all the time is the calculate function. That's what the calculate function does. It's gonna refine the filters. Go point them at some other subset of the data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run calculate 
And when we do it, we're going to add this override filter, state override. So we're going to say, hey, go, uh, go calculate, go create a new filter context. And when you do, add this override filter for state equals Oregon. Calculate says, sure, boss. It takes the old filter context, creates a new filter context uh, with all the old filters in it, plus this filter for state equals Oregon because we added it in the code. Calculate, do this stuff here, comma, argument to a calculate is all the override filters that we need. So here's where we add it to that new filter context. So now here in filter context two, we're looking at both February and Oregon. And if we look at the measure, right, or the cell specifically, well, we should be looking at both February and Oregon. Perfect. The rest of this stuff is super duper easy, okay? So what are we gonna do next? Well, again, we're gonna derive a table, right? After we refine the filters, we tend to derive tables. So we derive all the visible rows of sales. Again, not all the rows of sales, just all the visible ones. Filter through the lens of the current filter context of month equals two and state equals Oregon. So we take those rows right there. We derive them into this new table value. But the table value itself isn't useful. We have to pass it into an iterator to go manufacture something more useful out of it. Okay, so the iterator we're gonna use is the sumx function. We're gonna take the sales table, uh, pass it into sumx, add this column to it, and sum up the results. Okay, so see that again, okay. Sumx, we take the sales table, pass it into sumx. Again, sort of put sales in your eye right there. I just ran out of space, that's why I had to leave it out. Sumx, argument one equals sales. So take this sales uh, derived table, this derived table right here, Add this column to it for every single row, take that row's quantity and multiply it by that row's price. We get 16, 40, 18, and eight. And we sum up the results because we're looking at sum X, which gives us $82, which is of course that $82 right here. That's how we get the number in that cell. Good, okay, let's go do one more, one more example, okay? So we've done total sales, we've done Oregon sales. Let's do previous month sales. It's the most complicated. But again, it's not too tricky. Again, all we're doing is combining filter refiners, table derivations, and iterators. Those three things will get us almost everything we need in DEX. Okay, uh, so just like before, this $136, when that cell starts evaluating, the filter context is completely empty, which means we're looking at the entire uh, sales physical table, okay? So the very first thing that happens to every single measure, because every measure is a filter refiner, when you call a measure, the very first thing that happens is it performs current row filtering, right? Okay, so current row filtering looks for categorical values of the current row. It finds one, month equals two right there. And what does it do? It creates a new filter context with that filter added to it. So here we've got our new filter context with month equals two. That month equals two, again, comes from right there, right? The value of the current row, the categorical value of the current row. Okay, so now uh, if we look at this filter context right here, we're looking at February, which is good except that it's wrong, right? So if we think about this cell, it's previous month sales, we don't wanna look at February, which is the current month, we wanna look at the previous month sales, which is January. So this filter contest is no good, it should say month equals one and it says month equals two. All right, how are we gonna fix that? Well, obviously we're gonna fix it through a combination of table derivations, iterators, and filter refiners. Okay, let's see how that works. So uh, the next we're gonna do is derive a table. We're gonna derive all of the currently visible values of the month column in the sales table. So we do values of sales month, right? And if we're not looking through the filter context, we could see months one, two, and three. But if we are looking through the filter context, we're just looking at those values right there. And all I see is two, right? So what do we get? We get this one column, one row table of month equals two, okay? That's the table value that says, what are all the currently visible months, okay? So the next we're gonna do, the next we're gonna do is we're gonna take that table value and turn it into a number which says, what should our, what should the month number that we actually wanna look at be, okay? So we take this table value of month uh, two, we pass it into the max x iterator. Max x says, I'm gonna take this derived table right here that one right there, right? I'm gonna add a column to it. What's the definition of my new column? For every single row, take the month number and subtract one. Well, two minus one is one. And if we take the max of that new column, well, it's the same as the min and the sum and all that stuff. But if we take the max of that one number, what do we get? One, and this is gonna be a hint as to which month we wanna look at. Cool, okay. So the next thing we're gonna do, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna derive another table. 
So before we found all of the visible values of month, now we're gonna get all the values of month, both visible and invisible using the all function. So before we just got two, cause that's what it looked like if you look through this lens, but using the all function, we sort of ignore the lens and we say, all right, what are all the values of month ignoring the lens? Well, there's one, two, and three. Those are all distinct values. So we get month one, two, and three. So we've got that table, right? Uh, but this table isn't ready yet. We can't pass it into a filter refiner because we just want to look at month one, right? And right now we've got month one, two, and three. We just want to keep that one row. Can you think of an iterator that uh, is just going to keep certain rows? I certainly can. Uh, it's easy for me. I do this all the time. But if you remember, uh, it's the filter function, right? So we're going to take this table value, pass it into filter, right? So this goes right there. So filter over all sales month, right? So take that table value and add the following column to it. Month equals month hint. Remember the month hint is one. We got that a second ago. So we wanna know, does each row's month equal one? Does one equal one? Yeah, sure does. How about two? Nope. How about three? Nope. Okay, so which ones do we keep? Just the true rows. So we get this new table value of month equals one. Up here, we just got a scalar. We just got a single number, but we need a table value, which is what we got right here. So we've got this two, new table value of month equals one, which we can now pass into, can now pass into a filter refiner to create a new filter context, which is exactly what we're gonna do next. Okay, so we've got our month override and we're gonna pass it into calculate. We're gonna say, go run all this stuff, but do it under new filters. The new filter I want is based on this override of VR month override, which is that table value right there. So what's gonna happen? Calculate is gonna create a new filter context. It's gonna take the old one and say, hey, there's an override for month equals one. So it's gonna add the filter for month equals one. And it's also gonna say, well, wait, there was already a filter in there for month equals two. Because we're doing an override, we assume that the override is the thing that we want. So we remove the old filter for month equals two and replace it with month equals one, right? So we sort of xnay that filter right there and we replace it with that one right there. So now in this new filter context, this is sort of the, uh, the third filter context that we're producing zero, one, and two, right? In this uh, third filter context, we're pointing at all of the rows for month one. And if you look at the name of the measure, previous month sales, well, we're executing it in February. Yeah, we wanna look at month one, perfect. We're looking at the exact subset of the data set that we wanna work with. So all we gotta do now is again, the real easy stuff. We're gonna derive a table and iterate over it. So we're gonna derive all the visible rows in sales, which happens to be all the rows for January, exactly what we want. There's all the rows for January in a table value. Okay, so we're gonna take that table value, right? And we're gonna pass it into an iterator, specifically the sum X iterator, right? We're gonna say sum X over the sales table. So again, put that right there in your head. So sum X over the sales table, the, the sales derived table, I should say, right? So there's all the derived rows of sales. We're gonna add this column to it. For every single row, take the quantity and multiply it by the price. Quantity price, quantity price, quantity price, quantity price. That's all those numbers right there. And when we're done, what do we do with it? We sum up the results. Why sum? Because we're using the sum X iterator, which gives us $136, which is that number right there. So that's how we uh, calculate previous month's sales in this particular summary table, okay? Now there's a lot of stuff going on in here, uh, and it may have been a little confusing if this is already your first time through, but I, I would like to point out that everything we did was just through a combination of uh, refining the filters, deriving tables, and iterating. That's all we did. And that's true for about 95, maybe even 98% of DAX. There's a few other things in there, but frankly, for an intermediate DAX user, you don't need any of them. You could do just about everything you need to do with refining the filters, deriving tables, and iterating. Okay, so again, the three components of DAX, the three tools that you're gonna use to build numbers and build calculation. Refining the filters, where we target the subset of rows that we wanna work with. Deriving the tables, where we extract those rows into a table value that we can work with. And iterators that take that table value and manufacture something more useful out of it, right? It adds an expression column and does something with it. Maybe it sums it up, maybe it averages it, maybe it just keeps the true rows. Maybe we produce a single number, maybe we produce a whole table value, okay? Again, so what do these things do again? A bit more defined. The filter refiners, they create a new filter context, a new lens through which we can look at the physical tables in the data model. 
This is based on current row filtering, sometimes called context transition. Oh, my mouse just died for a second. Current row filtering, sometimes called context transition, right? Takes any categorical values to the current row and adds them as filters. Uh, optional override filters. We can, with a filter refiner, usually calculate, we can provide a table value and say, hey, add this to the filter context when current row filtering doesn't quite get the job done, right? Uh, with table derivations, we're gonna create a table value based on physical tables in the data model um, and the, the current uh, filter context. So if we ask for a table by name, we get all of the columns of that table, right? But filtered, respecting the current filter context, looking through that lens. If we use uh, values against a column in a table, we just get all of the visible values of just that one column. Again, respecting the filter context, looking through that lens. If we use the all function, we ignore the lens. If we use the all function on a table, we get all of the rows and columns of a table, ignoring the filters. If we use the all function on a just one column of a table, we get all the distinct values of that column, uh, ignoring the filters, right? Those are the table derivations that we use over and over and over again. So these table derivations create a table value. Well, what do we do with that table value? We pass it into an iterator. An iterator creates a new value, either a table value or a scalar, like a number, from a usually derived table value. This new value is based on the action of the iterator acting on the defined expression call. Well, that's a mouthful. What we mean is sum x is going to take our newly defined column and sum it up. Max x takes our newly defined column and takes the max of it. And filter takes our newly defined column, argument two, and just keeps the true rows, okay? So if you can understand those three things, you can understand DAX. Okay, this is normally the part of the presentation where I'd ask questions. If you've got questions, uh, you can leave them in the comment section and I will try to get to them. I really hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope you have a great rest of your day.